corsets are bad. Why? It's quite obvious. They squished organs, restricted movement, broke ribs, and made women faint. Torture devices and symbols of patriarchy. Right? Right? And such narration is often confirmed by mainstream media. This Florida lady spends her days and nights in a corset and is unable to perform any of her daily duties, all of it to achieve an 18-inch waist. Or this drawing from 1894 shows how squished women's organs were with a corset. Or this actress just confessed wearing a corset for a movie made her breathless. Here's the thing, did you ever think about what women wore before bras were invented? And I'm not talking about A size, I'm talking about like F size, E size, G sizes. Growing up, I always watched movies showing ladies being tight laced by their maids or read books about heroines fainting. But as I grew older, I realized that none of these books, none of these stories were written at a time where people actually wore corsets. So, for example, Gone with the Wind, which greatly shaped my perception of corsets, was published almost 20 years after traditional corsets disappeared. And what about my favorite books written in the actual corset times? None of them mentioned corsets, not once. Why? Because they were such an obvious piece of wardrobe that no one ever expected them to go away. Another thing I didn't realize is that maids that were tight lacing the mistresses also wore corsets while doing that. Hell, even the ladies' male love interests wore corsets. Yeah, men wore corsets too. So if corsets were so dangerous, why did most of the society, rich or poor, ladies, men, why did they wear them? To answer that question, we have to delve deeper into the construction of corsets. So the modern narration tends to put the accents on, on corsets that were drastically reducing the waist. That would put the tension on the middle of the corset, straining the muscles. But Victorian corsets were actually incredibly complicated, well-tailored garments that were meant to fit your body perfectly, meaning that all of your body would receive sort of the same amount of pressure. In that case, the biggest impracticality of wearing corsets was the movement restrictions, as in you were not able to reach your toes while wearing a corset. But to be completely honest, I can do that even without a corset, so... Why would people wear corsets, though? As I mentioned before, the bra was invented quite recently, and before that, corsets were kind of doing that job. Corsets supported the back by distributing the breast's weight evenly across the body. It also helped to support the hips against the weight of multiple petticoats and layers of crinolines and bustles, etc. 19th century dresses were quite complicated garments with lots of layers, and corsets were helping your hips deal with all that. Fashion-wise, it made the clothing fit a lot better and look a lot smoother, which helped achieving the fashionable silhouette. Men's corsets, on the other hand, helped with reducing the beer belly and were generally used in the early 19th century to sort of shape the torso, which at the time was... it was fashionable to be slim-waisted. And poor women wore corsets not only for fashion purposes and to support their backs and breasts, but also to show the rich people that they were actually responsible, well put together, respectable and capable. But maybe they just didn't know any better. Well, let's have a look at modern corset wearers. We have a couple of examples of extreme tight lacing, which always gets the most media attention. Like, it's, it's not about the aesthetics anymore, it's about the challenge. I'm currently in the Guinness Book for the smallest waist I'm a living person. This 39-year-old mother of three is in love with waist training. Then we have people that wear corsets on a daily basis because it's their style, and they're able to work, play, ride horses in them, run businesses. Well, then we have people with back problems that were special orthopedic corsets as a form of treatment, but they're torture devices, right? Then we also have tens of thousands of reenactresses around the world that cook, sew, take care of children, run around the camp in their corsets. And we're talking about like real Victorian corsets here, obviously not the original ones, but the ones made using the original patterns. They literally do everything that they have to. They, they carry heavy buckets full of water, they, they generally run around historic sites wearing corsets, and they pray 
use the corsets as back pain relievers and they do all that while constantly interacting with tourists going like are you wearing corset do you not feel like fainting and i've seen a lot of costumers do crazy stuff in corsets i've seen some costumers doing push-ups i've seen costumers riding horses and i myself have tried bouldering in a corset and i climbed a tree in a corset without any issues What about opera singers? They wear full-on historical costume while singing, performing and just doing their job. And what about celebrities? Did you really believe that all of the red carpet ladies have that great figures? Let me let you in on a little secret. Almost all red carpet gowns, especially the wasp-waisted ones, are heavily structured, meaning there is some corseted under layer to make them look that well. But you never hear them complaining about that. So if corsets weren't that bad, where did this misconception come from? Well, surprisingly or unsurprisingly, we have to thank men for that. Women's fashion has always been ridiculed, like pamphlets, satires throughout history, often focused on new fashion trends, new hairstyles, new styles, and women following those fashion trends were always seen as vain and even indecent sometimes. Why was that? Well, in a world where a woman's only way of expressing herself was through the clothes and through the fashion, that field was obviously looked down upon. And in Victorian era, where the obedient wife expectation was very much alive, it clashed with the growing popularity of women's rights movement. So the opposers of the movement took every opportunity to bring women down. And it's also no coincidence that in 19th century, fashion was one of the only industries not only relying on, but also run by women. Throughout a lot of the century, most of the high fashion designs were actually made by women, and most famous fashion houses were actually run by women. So before before there was Charles Worth, fashion was ruled by madams. Madame Palmer, Madame Barra, Madame Prost, Madame Gaudry, milliners Madame Bourguet, Madame Rebu, Madame Viro, and a lot of madam owned businesses, some of which employed over a hundred workers. It was mainly madams who designed corsets and mainly madams who sold them in their madam owned studios. So no wonder that men, especially those opposing to women's suffrage, were so keen to pick on women's corsets and ridicule the wear of corsets which was a prime example of women's pride and independence. The moral or immoral consequences of corset wearing were always kind of a topic of a public debate. But it wasn't until the second half of the 19th century when the development of medicine started a whole new anti-corset mania. Doctors argued that wearing corsets could lead to tuberculosis, cancer, cutting the liver in half, and even bad behavior. When the x-ray was invented, doctors were really quick to kind of corseted body to further prove the harmful effects of wearing a corset. There is, however, little scientific proof that corsets were as damaging to the bodies as they claim. If they were, wouldn't most 19th century female skeletons be deformed? And we know that to be untrue. There aren't numerous medical reports of women with corset-induced broken ribs or livers cut in half. We don't know of any famous women suffering from broken ribs or corset-related health problems. Problems. And we also know that a very little percentage of women actually tighten their corsets super tightly. Why? Because they weren't living mannequins. They, they had stuff to do, they had work to do and business to attend to. And it's also no wonder that the debate was really hot in the 1890s and 1900s when women started being more active and practicing sports and appearing at universities. The suffrage movement was stronger than ever and women were generally speaking more visible in public. So every chance to pick on anything that would bring them down was taken. And it also makes sense that corsets were the center of attention at the time because it's true that the female silhouette of the 1890s and 1900s 
was quite striking. But little did poor men know that it was mostly clever cuts and a lot of padding. <laughs> Nowadays, we often fall into a similar trap. We look at a photograph and we think, wow, that's a striking silhouette. But little do we know about all of the stuff that's going on underneath. The corset's main purpose was to support the bust, smooth out the tummy rolls, and generally speaking, do what Spanx does nowadays. <laughs> the rest was done by bum pads and bust fillers, frilly corset covers and optical illusion. Not to mention that majority of the late 19th century and early 20th century photographs were heavily edited. <laughs> and it's quite easy to spot once you know what you're looking for. We look at those photographs without knowing they were altered and that's why it's so easy for us to believe that women surgically removed ribs to achieve that kind of silhouette. But you know what? Knowing the state of Victorian medicine, which made it dangerous even to pull a tooth, do you really think any woman would undergo a likely deadly procedure only for an effect that could be easily achieved by some strategical padding and smart tailoring? What about drawings and paintings? I myself was often terrified by how freakishly small waists are on fashion plays or paintings. I looked at them assuming that people back then were completely honest and that improving your look is a completely modern invention. Why was I wrong? Portraits have always been heavily idealized and fashion plays only show an exaggerated, unnatural beauty ideal to accentuate the fashionable silhouette more and make it easier to follow. You can have a look at more realistic female figures on film at the time, but for actual portrayals of how women's bodies looked like at the time, we won't know for sure unless we see them naked. Why do modern actresses complain about uncomfortable corsets then? Corset making is a complicated process and it takes a lot of time and a lot of fitting. And it's vital that it fits perfectly. That requires both extensive fittings and a process called breaking in a corset, which means slowly adjusting the corset to your body by wearing it for small amounts of time daily. With the reality of film production, it's very unlikely that there is enough time for that. There probably isn't enough time to personalize and break in a corset for each actress involved, let alone for the actresses to get used to wearing it for long periods of time. A corset, if well made, shouldn't be uncomfortable. So why have all the films, books, and media been lying to us? Because we love feeling superior over previous eras. We like to think that in medieval times, people would not wash themselves and would drink only urine. We like to think that in the 18th century, women's hair were infected with rats. I mean, realistically, why would anyone want to live with a rodent in their hair if they could easily avoid it? We like to believe that people lived impractically and were generally stupid because it makes us feel better about the progress that we've done. And while it's true that in terms of medicine and human rights, we've come very far from the times when women wore corsets, people were always people. They always wanted to laugh, they always wanted to work, to play, they wanted to feel good. Generally speaking, they wanted to live. And they weren't willing to give that all up in the name of dangerous or life-threatening fashion. They were okay with giving up comfort, though, that's true. Clothes at that time were very formal, very tight-fitting, very long, and it was actually that, and not necessarily corsets, that sparked numerous dress reform movements. But that's another story. To sum up, next time you hear a corset-related horror story, ask yourself whether it's not a myth straight from a 19th century male-led newspaper. Now, to clarify, it's not true that only men found corsets controversial and ridiculed them. Plenty of women did too, and as with every public debate, there were different voices from both sexes. It is also not true that wearing corsets for an extensive period of time left women's bodies unaffected. 
it. Studies show wearing a corset for a long period of time slightly adjusted your digestive system and may shift your organs a bit similarly to what happens when you're pregnant. Also, women wearing corsets were sometimes not able to drop them at once because some of their muscles have weakened. And it's also worth noting that while most women wore corsets for their own pleasure or to compete with other women, men were no strangers to fetishizing the look. Either way, as everything in history, it's a complicated topic full of little nuances and different voices, and it deserves to be treated as such, and not to be shallowed to another history hoax. So next time someone goes like, but corsets killed women, tell them not to act like a typical 19th century Jebediah. Sincerely, an occasional Victorian corset wearer. <laughs> Is that even a title? <laughs> I don't think so.